The rest of the story. O. Parker McComas had had enough. Mr. McComas, as president of the company, was responsible for the tough decisions, the final decisions. On this particular project, the sponsorship of a television show, his decision would have to be no. The company had put too much money into the thing already, and now it was time to pull the plug, get the show off the air before the stockholders started screaming. This was not merely an objective calculation on Mr. McComas' part. He hated the program himself. He was surprised by how much he disliked it after seeing it at home on television. So Mr. McComas called his ad agency, and he got Terry Klein on the horn. He said, what'll it cost me to dump this loser? Klein said, why do you want to dump it? McComas said, because it's unfunny, it's silly, it's totally boring. Klein said, well, what Terry Klein said is the rest of the story. Actually, this project had seemed doomed from the start. The network had refused to cough up enough cash to put it on the air. No sponsor would contribute enough cash to carry the whole weight of it, so an independent company had to be formed to take up the slack. That should have been the first clue. But they went into production anyway, quickly soared three times, four times, five times over budget. Every executive involved in the property was incredulous. Some were actually betting money that the show would lose half a million dollars the first year. But it now didn't appear as though they'd make it that far. Its network debut was further threatened by poor clearance, was scheduled opposite a top-rated program. That night, the cast gathered at Mark Daniels' Laurel Canyon home to watch their hard work on television. The film quality was terrible. The pace was more stage play than sitcom, except for the sounds coming from the TV set. A pall of silence fell like an anvil in the room. Nobody laughed. Nobody even smiled. And after the grinding agony of the half hour was over, everybody departed without a word and went home to bed. And the next day, the sponsor got busy looking for loopholes for some way to get out of this awful, awful mistake. And so here we have the company president, O. Parker McComas, on the telephone behind his big desk, he's telling his ad agency the party is over. But Terry Klein, the ad agency vice president, begged. Nobody remembers exactly why, but he begged. He begged Mr. McComas not to pull the fledgling series. Give it just one more airing, he pleaded. And if you still feel this way, then the show is gone. One more airing. And for some reason that nobody can recall, Mr. McComas listened and agreed to one more airing. And because he did, television history was made. And the world, for the laughter, was a considerably more tolerable place. For that show's shaky debut, it was 39 years ago, this very night, October 15, 1951, unexpectedly became the first of a great many adored by a legion of loyal viewers, even to this day. For you see, even though in the beginning nobody seemed to, the whole world quickly came to love Lucy. Now you know the rest of the story.